Hey, fabulous carriers! Okay, so we just got finished with an incredible meeting. It was so much fun to hear everyone share some of their favorite things about this week, their Mary Kay journey, what they're looking forward to this seminar, and y'all just bless my heart so much. But with all of the wonderful talking that we did, we totally ran out of time for brows, and it was more important to hear everyone's heart than to talk about brows. So as per vote, I just we're, we're gonna do it here, and I'm gonna have this video that you can um, refer back to to as you need to not only learn how to apply um, brows for yourself, but also how to teach your customers to do this. And especially because we are in masking season and there are very few things that people see but right here. So lashes and brows are a big deal because people don't even notice if I'm putting on lipstick or lip gloss, right? And they can barely see if I have on foundation half the time because I'm so covered from here to here. So I'm excited to show you how a couple different ways, a couple different ways to do brows so that you can feel confident doing it yourself, but then also some really fun ways to teach your people and you'll feel super amazing as well. Hey Danielle. Okay, so here Here's the first thing that was like the easiest way I used to learn how to do brows. First of all, I wanna point out the fact that matching color is a big deal. So my natural hair color is this like darker kind of a brown. I definitely get glosses on it that kind of make the tone a little bit richer, but even in a natural setting, it's just a darker brown. My lashes and brows, however, are this really like fair brown color. They're almost like a dark blonde, which is really <laughs> ridiculous because when I don't have brows on, and this is like just a little tiny bit of nut, nut, nut that I did without the lights on at like 6.30 this morning, and so you can barely tell them, but they're even lighter than this in real life. And they don't stand out, and they don't match my hair, and it looks like either I bleached my eyebrows or I changed the color of my hair. Nothing looks natural. So. I will not leave the house without putting on my brows or mascara so that you can see the hair that is on my face. And they can shape your face. The brows are the windows or the frame to your face. And so here is the first way that I used to learn how to do brows. So I'm gonna take our um, eyeliner, eyeshadow, it's like the brush that's the duo thing right here, okay? And I'm gonna dip it in, I used to do hazelnut, but I think it's a little bit better to do espresso for me, although, I don't know, maybe that's a little too dark, but dealer's choice, espresso, hazelnut, one of those like matted non-shimmer, you don't want glitter brows, we, I, we're we not doing Broadway, like you want normal brows, so use the matte colors. And then you're just gonna take and apply a little bit of color to just kind of fill in, which makes it like kind of soft and not super, it's not like Instagram worthy, right? Like you've seen the Instagram brows, if you don't know what that is, like go Google it and it's insane. People have crazy brows. Um, or very, very precise, very intense brows. But you can kind of just brush this in and make it fill in just the little parts here and there. I used to also get this kind of wet in the sink to make it a little bit more precise and it just kind of fills in. And our shadows are great because they do hang on to skin really well, like the Chroma Fusion. Um, and so I'm just doing like small little brush strokes to fill in my brow and that's not terrible, right? Like, let's hold this up and see. Right, that's not bad. That looks like a decent brow compared to this, for sure. It's just a little bit better. That's a big difference. So here's the other thing though, sometimes this isn't enough. And I actually have this fabulous little like hole. You can't really tell maybe so much here, but there's this hole between here and here on my brow that I definitely notice. I'm sure not everybody else does, but I notice it. And to me, it looks like I've just got this weird little cutout right there in my brow, especially if they're brushed properly or have a fresh washed face, you can definitely see it. And so for me, doing something like this isn't enough because the eyeshadow will only hang on to so much of like the hair around your eyes or your skin. And then after a while, I need something a little bit more precise. So I am a big fan of our definer pencil and our volumizing tint. And um, I use the dark brunette on myself. Um, the brunette looks a little bit, it's just, just not the right color, but um, they're really great at versatility. So anywhere from blonde, dark blonde, um, brunette, dark brunette, and even black brown for the liner. So any shade of color will work really great. And whether you have um, more reddish toned hair, whether you have really blonde hair, black hair, um, you know, gray hair, white hair, there's, you can use these brows and these products that we have to look very natural and very normal so that you don't look like you just painted brows on. So before I put these on, let me tell you that you can use the pencil or the gel on their own 
uh, but I prefer to use them together because the pencil for me, it's not quite as precise or natural looking. It looks like you can see um, kind of like a softer version and I like a more like like a fake actual brow lashes or brow hairs if you will and that's where this comes from but this will not fill in the holes that I need on the shape of my brow which is why I like the pencil so marrying these two together for me it gives me like great confidence in my brows and gives me a lot of like perfection for myself I'm like oh yes I have reached my perfect brow shape today because of these two products I've always been frustrated when I've only done one or the other but that's me. Some people are super low key. They have great shape to their brows. They've got great fill. They just need to like fill in a little bit of thickness and this is awesome. Or some people have the hair there but it just needs to be a different color and they just need to put this on a little bit and it'll change it. So you don't have to have them together. Just know that I'm very obsessive about my brows and so I, I marry them together. Um, the other thing I wanna talk really quick about is how to shape your brow properly and a couple do's, do's and don'ts. So some don'ts are you don't want a block of color. Once upon a time, well it may not have even been acceptable, but we kind of pretended to make it acceptable in the 90s and early 2000s that like from here to here was all the same like uh, intensity, if you will, pigment, if you will. And that is not a ca the case anymore. If you see a girl with like a very stark start to her brows, like that's not okay. And you kind of look at it like, oh, like go, calm your brows down a little bit, right? Because we want a natural brow that doesn't have this like, you know, stripe or box of color. There's this fade that goes here and as it progresses outward, it gets more um, perfect and it gets more pointed and more pigmented and darker. So what we wanna do is have a brow that starts out real light and airy. Sorry, I thought I just felt my cat and that freaked me out. Real light and airy and then it starts to get more precise precise as it goes out. So that's one rule. The other rule is to shape it in the proper way. We don't want our brows to look too close together or you'll look like you're angry or that you have one brow or that you got really bad Botox, right? We don't want that. And we also don't want our brows to come too short or go too long because then they'll make us look worried or sad or just like awkward. And you don't wanna put your arch somewhere where it doesn't belong. And I know that sometimes we have this idea of what like a perfect arch should be, if it should be rounded or spiky or pointed or whatever. But the truth is your brow already tells you what your natural arch should be. And the goal here is to enhance your own natural brow, not to recreate one that never belonged on your face in the first place. So the way that we're gonna measure all of these things is with our nose and our eye. And I like to take this awesome defining pencil, which by the way is self-sharpening, I love that. Um, no like, you know, sharpening and flakes and all that stuff. So we're gonna lay it right against our, the side of our nose and right up against here, straight up and down. That's where our brow should begin, okay? That's where our brow begins. We don't want it to begin in here or in here, we want it to begin right here. Go Google like weird eyebrows and you'll see where people <laughs> have them way different. And this, again, this this will show where your natural shape should be, okay? Also, if you're over plucking your brows, doing this will tell you, oh, I've been plucking too much. So, so keep an eye on that. To do the outside line, you'll notice where my brow comes to like a stopping point right here. But if I line up my nose and the outer corner of my eye, that's where I should be measuring where my brow goes. Do you see the difference? Do you see how short my brows do not grow? And this is where I should have the perfect line of my brow. Look at that. See how natural that looks? Like that's one reason this brow looks amazing and this does not. Because it just isn't finished and it just, you know, incomplete. And then where to find the arch is pretty simple. Um, your arch should not go right here. <laughs> you want to go from your nose to your pupil and that is where your arch should be. And you can see that mine naturally does that. Whether it's curved, whether it's an actual arch, high or low, intense or not, that's where your natural arch will be, would be your nose over your pupil and your brow. Bing, there it is, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm, I'm gonna be really simple and quick about it. Not that I've been quick so far, but this part is quick. So I'm gonna take my pencil first. If you really wanna get intense, you can like brush down your brows and fill in this part here and then brush them up and do the bottom. I'm, I'm not, I mean, we might as well. Let's just go all out and go crazy just so you can see the difference here. So I definitely need to get my brows trimmed and waxed and all that fun stuff, but I'm not gonna, don't worry about that. So I'm just gonna go over the natural line of my brow. I am not redrawing. I'm just going where the hair stops. And then remember, I'm coming all the way Get to my eye corner right there. 
So I'm going to draw a little line. Ta-da! Let's just make sure this one's right. Eye corner. Oh, look, it can go a little further. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to brush my brows upward. And we're going to go under the bottom. I'm going to fill in that hole. See, there's like that big gap. This one doesn't do it, but that one does. <laughs> And I want my brows to start thick and get thinner. They should not be a, a block. The shape here, the thickness here, should not be the same thickness here. And vice versa, the thinness here should not be the same here. We want them to get th thick and or thick and light pigmented and get more precise and deeper in their pigment and, and thinner as they go out. Okay. And then I'm going to gently brush upward to just fill in that little gap. All right, already that looks way better and even you can see the preciseness of that versus the eyeshadow, right? Like that's definitely more filled in and precise and it, it looks more sharp where this is like that soft brush and eyeshadow, which is not bad, but it's not as precise as the brow defining pencil, right? If you guys have questions while I'm doing this, feel free to holler on here and let me know. One thing I will make sure you wanna tell your customers when you're teaching about this um, gel, this volumizing brow tint, it is a tint, so it's going to naturally color your own hairs. It's not going to like, um, I don't know, it's not a stain, but it does tint them for the day, which is wonderful. The other cool thing about this is that it um, literally has little microfibers in it just like mascara. And so it will put faux hair on your brows just like mascara helps put faux like fibers on your lashes to make them look thicker or longer and more full. The thing about that though is the first tube, just like when you first open a new tube of mascara and you have like crazy thickness and you gotta really scrape off the edge to not waste any, but certainly to not make your lashes look all goopy and spidery, the same is really true of this tint. Like if you just pull it straight out the first couple times you use it and put it on, you will freak out at how insane your brows look. So scrape off, less is more. It's always easier to build upon than to, to wipe off, but at the end of the day, it is makeup. It wipes off. It's not going to like, you know, stay forever. It's okay to mess up. Um, but because of the thickness of this and because of the rules we had gone over with these starting out lighter and this being more pigmented, I like to start with my brow tint in the arch and work my way out and then slowly work my way in so that the rest of my brow gets the majority of the pigment and the fibers and there's less to work with as I get closer to the ends, okay? This is something I learned from Louise Costco too. So this is not Sarah's rules of makeup. Everything I'm teaching you about brows thus far has come from our global makeup artist within Mary Kay. Um, that really know their stuff. And some of these tips have come from Lori Hogg as well, who is a great makeup artist and a consultant with Mary Kay. Um, so these are just some, this is not just me making this up, I promise. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. I cannot talk and do this at the same time, so bear with me. I'm gonna turn my brush a little bit. OMG, you see how much that looks better. I love it. Oh, that looks so much better. I, I'm telling you, you think I'm obsessed about my brows. I like legitimately am obsessive about my brows. I'm gonna fill in that little bit right there. I'm sure this looks ridiculous if I look in, in a mirror because I'm doing this on the tiniest little camera. <laughs> Okay, but do you notice how you can see there's not a box in the front? I don't know how much you can tell that, but like right here, you can see the brow hairs and some of the skin through it, and that's a good thing. And then as you get further out here, you see less skin, and it's just more um, pigmented and intenseness. So let's just hold up the difference here. This is with eyeshadow. Not bad at all. Definitely has a natural look, but a much more softer um, look as well. And then this is much more intense and precise 
um, where I have taken the pencil and the look even just the difference there it's definitely darker but definitely more precise now if you want to go nuts one of my other favorite things to do is to take a little bit of the biscotti and use um, like our cream shadow brush and just dust it right up here under the arch and it gives you like an extra little lift to your brow do you see that I don't know if you can tell that much on this video but to me that just gives like this little um, a little eye lift to just put a tiny little bit of that biscotti right under here because it's matte so it doesn't look like eyeshadow um, and if you have darker skin you'd have to play with some other colors so like the hazelnut um, the mahogany the espresso um, but even like the biscotti or the blossom would give a little bit of a highlight without it looking like glitter um, we certainly don't want to play with like some crazy glitter but we want it to be like a shade or so lighter <coughs> excuse me, a shade or so lighter than our actual skin pigment. One second. <coughs> oh. <clears throat> so find your natural skin color and an eyeshadow that's complementary as a shade or two lighter than that and just dust a little bit right up under that arch and it'll give your eyebrow a nice little lift in addition. I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know um, what you liked or what you learned. Was there something new that you didn't know about our brow products or just some tips and tricks? Um, what are you excited to tell your customers about? Is this something you think they're gonna be excited to learn? Or do you have any questions? Make sure you leave any of those things in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. You guys are awesome. Thank you for your patience and I hope this was a little bit helpful for wow brows. Oh, let's finish it off. Ready? Ta-da! See? That's all people see and it looks so good. All right, guys. Happy Monday and happy year-end!